Does that surprise you? Well, the, the key question is, does it change anybody's vote? Right. Not do you score the debate winner, because there are people out there now, the president won the debate. We think more Republicans are watching. He won our poll uh, as the winner of the debate. Uh, so some Republicans are saying the president had a stronger debate tonight. Uh, many of those Republicans, I suspect, aren't changing their vote. I think that the tightness here, I thought would have been a bit, little bigger gap in favor of the president on debate points and on debating style, style and substance. I think the president won the debate. Uh, but this is a reflection of our polarized country. Uh, we came into this race... 47, 47, a point or two nationally. Most of the battleground states are about the same. Uh, did anything happen tonight that is going to cause a Democrat to change his mind and vote for Governor Romney? I think not. Did anything happen tonight that's going to cause a committed Republican to change his mind and vote for President Obama? I think not. Uh, there's a tiny slice in this country of undecided, truly undecided voters left. Um, are they going to vote on foreign policy? Are they going to vote on the economy? The leadership part of tonight uh, could factor into that, the, the leadership part. But look, you can be sure the candidates have to adjust on this starting now. What will be on TV, new TV ads? Will and it was interesting to see our focus group earlier when right. Soledad asked if this had changed people's minds and if people had now kind of gone in a direction. It seemed like a majority of them raised their hands saying tonight had kind of pushed them toward one direction or the other, though they didn't specify Well, if you, uh, there's another poll out of just undecided voters, and there the, the gap for Obama is much higher. Mm -hmm. But I think that John is exactly right. This is a very small sliver of people you're looking at. And you could even see the occasional uh, uh, chances that Romney took to distinguish himself, were, it struck me directed at domestic politics. So for instance, Florida, as you say, is very much in play. A lot of Jewish voters there. And Romney decided he would take, you know, on Iran, he was going to take one further step and say that he would indict Ahmadinejad, presumably for war crimes. I'm not sure how you could do that, because Ahmadinejad has simply said for those. speech. Right, it was actually for speech. Right. Yeah. I don't know, but, but clearly, that was a kind of rhetorical flourish directed at a very specific set of voters whom he was trying to, to, to sway. He also said where many times uh, Iran is four years closer to a nuclear weapon. I mean, he just repeated that over and over again. Obviously, Florida very much in play. And, and then President Obama, though, had some very specific things about where he went in Israel, the Yad Vashem, uh, and, and a particular town he went to where, where Hezbollah rockets uh, had landed. One of his best moments. When, when he actually got angry out there a couple of times, and I thought he was at it, well, Obama was at his mm -hmm. best. I, th I think what we saw tonight was Obama came in slightly favored to win the presidency. I think he comes out of this a little stronger to win the presidency. Uh, he, that poll, I, was, I agreed with John. I thought it would be a, a bigger mm -hmm. split. I think what that poll suggests, mm -hmm. given the composition of who's in the, in the poll, is that the president had a clear victory tonight, but not a, it wasn't a blowout. It wasn't an overwhelming one. But I want to disagree with James Carville about this question about it's only who's the most str the strongest who's the most aggressive mm -hmm. that that is the most appealing in a debate i don't i think had romney done that tonight i think he would have hurt himself i think what he has to do is is to be a comfortable person everybody knows he's he, they saw him in the first debate being strong and aggressive what they want to make sure is he is not a bomb thrower and and you've got the legacy, and you've got the legacy of the last Republican exactly. president. But, but exactly right. Remember, this is exactly what, what right. Romney was trying to say: yeah. is I am not George W. Bush. I'm not going to get you into yeah. another war. I'm not going to. But agree he didn't call. seem quite comfortable to me. I thought he was. Comfortable you know, enough. I think I. I just I think, think there were times work he was like, very. Yeah. You, you didn't mind the sweat. Yeah. Uh, I did not think well, I we gotta, we gotta take that. A quick, was we got to take a quick break. I should point out we are the only cable network uh, with a, a scientific poll like this. We're waiting more results of our poll at tonight's debate. Watchers will tell you if the debate influenced people's votes. That's really uh, the most crucial question, and also how it may have influenced people's votes if it did. We'll be right back. We have more results coming in from our poll of registered voters who actually watched tonight's debate on foreign policy. We asked, can President Obama handle the responsibilities of commander-in-chief? Look at this. 63% said yes. 36% said no. We asked the same question about Governor Romney. 60% said uh, he could handle the responsibilities of commander-in-chief. 38% say he can't. About the same numbers for both of these candidates. Remember, this is a scientific poll of debate watchers only. Uh, we've seen over the course of these debates that a higher percentage of Republicans tune in than Democrats. We're going to have more poll numbers coming up. Uh, debate watchers will tell us which candidates spent more time on the attack and how this face-off influenced their all-important votes. Anderson? Let's talk about this with our uh, contributors, Alex Castellanos, also joining us as a former uh, special advisor to the president, Van Jones. Interesting what was not discussed tonight, and you pointed out Benghazi. I don't even yeah. think the word Benghazi was used. Uh, very lightly and right away from it. And I think that's very interesting. 
if you watched all day long on TV, it was Benghazi, Benghazi, trying to make the president, diminish the president's uh, leadership standing by, from my point of view, politicizing a tragedy. And when it was time for him to sit down and be the commander in chief, uh, Romney, he made a different decision. And I think that's important because I think for most Americans, you see a tragedy like this. I knew Ambassador Stevens. His parents have asked, please stop politicizing this. I hope this then gets moved out where it should be, back into the investigation stage, and let's talk about real issues. I was glad that Romney did not continue politicizing uh, this tragedy in this country. Well, I would have thought it interesting to have a debate tonight on a legitimate issue worthy of discussion, which is why was an American ambassador in a dangerous place left unprotected on 9-11? Isn't that the president's responsibility? And why did this president continue to blame a movie for two weeks? Well, but, when but, but, we but, but this is what's not working. Apparently, apparently but, in the mind of, the nom of, of your nominee, this kind of, of, of attack is not worthy of a president. It's not worthy of this well, country. That, that was his and, decision. And, 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 I, and I applaud I him for it, and I applaud the president for his job in yeah, freeing Libya. You're let's not forget with Romney too much. Let, maybe yeah. so, but let's not yeah. yeah. well, we, 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 getting We got some more, uh, some more information on our poll and also some fact-checking. Let's go to Wolf for that. All right, Anderson, thank you. Our expert team of producers, researchers, reporters, they've been busy trying to figure out whether the candidates were telling the truth in tonight's debate. John Berman's ready with another reality check. John? Hey, Wolf, President Obama was bragging about certain policy success in Libya. He said the U.S. helped oust Gaddafi at a fraction of the cost of the war in Iraq. We were able to, without putting troops on the ground, at the cost of less than what we spent in two weeks in Iraq, liberate a country that had been under the yoke of dictatorship for 40 years, got rid of a despot who had killed Americans. So what are the facts here? The total cost for the first five years of the war in Iraq was 646 billion, which breaks down to about 700 million for two weeks, which is less than the 896 million the U.S. spent on military in, uh, intervention in Libya. So our verdict here is false on the math. Obama was right that Libya is cheap compared to Iraq overall, but he exaggerated by about $200 million when he cared, compared it to about two weeks in Iraq. We want to move on to the apology tour that's been a favorite line from Republicans on the campaign trail. Mitt Romney claimed, as he has many times in the past, that President Obama went on an international tour apologizing for U.S. policy when he took office. He said he'd meet with all the world's worst actors in his first year. He'd sit down with Chavez and, and Kim Jong-il, uh, with uh, uh, Castro, and with, uh, with President Ahmadinejad of, of Iran. And, uh, and I think they looked and thought, well, that's an unusual uh, uh, honor to receive from the President of the United States. And then the President began what I've called an apology tour of going to, to various nations in the Middle East and, and criticizing America. I think they looked at that and saw weakness. So what are the facts here? When the president took office, he did travel to several countries talking about American foreign policy. In France, for example, he said America has shown arrogance and had been dismissive, even derisive, though he also criticized Europe in that very same speech. And in none of these speeches, none of them, in Europe or the Middle East or here at home, did President Obama use the word apology or say He's sorry. So our verdict here is it is false to call the president's uh, speeches an apology tour. Even if he was critical of past U.S. foreign policy, he issued no apologies. Well, John, thank you. Both candidates say they'll keep Iran from producing nuclear weapons. Tom Foreman is standing by with another reality check. Tom? You know, Wolf, both candidates came in tonight knowing that Iran is one of the biggest issues out there, Iran's nuclear ambitions, and that it's been a big issue since the first day Barack Obama took office. Listen. We then organized the strongest coalition and the strongest sanctions against Iran in history. The disagreement I have with Governor Romney is that during the course of this campaign, he's often talked as if we should take premature military action. I think that would be a mistake. I think uh, from the very beginning, one of the challenges we've had with Iran is that they have looked at this administration and, and felt that the administration was not as strong as it needed to be. I think they saw weakness. And I think that when the president said he was going to create daylight between ourselves and Israel, that, that they noticed that as well. They agree on many points here. Each man says Iran will not get a nuke on my watch. Each one says economic sanctions are an important tool. Each one allows us how a military strike might be necessary to stop Iran's 
nuclear program, but they do not agree on where they put the emphasis in this equation. And that has led each to suggest for months now that my opponent is being reckless with Iran. Let's talk about the two extremes we're talking about here, starting with the military option. And to do that, what we've brought in here is a life-size virtual model of a Shahab-3 missile. We did this because we want you to see just what size these things are and how portable they are and how easily one could be hidden in a bunker or, say, the hold of a ship. We know they're reasonably accurate, reasonably reliable. We know Iran has a lot of them, and we know that they're powerful enough to carry a small nuclear weapon in that nose cone right up there. So if they get a nuclear weapon, Iran would have the ability to deliver it. Not to the United States, not even to Europe, really, except to the fringes, but it would reach all of the Middle East, and it would certainly have the range to strike the American ally, Israel, over there. Iran says it has no designs on developing a nuclear bomb. It does not want to strike Israel, and yet it is widely believed that Israel does have a contingency plan for striking Iran's nuclear production facilities to try to stop this if need be. The danger? No one knows if it would really work. And if it didn't work, Iran would not only still have a nuclear program, it would then have the pretext for saying it needed it because it had been attacked. But when Mitt Romney talks about strength, even though he was treading lightly tonight, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about the notion that the president has to make it very, very clear that America will stand with Israel if such an assault happens. Wolf. Tom, as, as you noted, the White House has said it will stand by Israel, but officials have clearly downplayed the idea of military intervention. Now, what's going on here? Yeah, the White House has preferred not to talk about the military part, but to talk much more about the idea of sanctions, to not rattle the sword, but to rattle the piggy bank. What they're talking about is the real. This is the currency of Iran. And since sanctions have been put in place by the United States and other countries, look what's happened in the past year. It used to be 12,500 rials to a U.S. dollar. That has dropped and dropped and dropped in value so much that now it's 35,000 to the U.S. dollar. Many imported products like red meat in Iran are now twice, twice as expensive as they were one year ago. What has that done? The idea is that that creates economic and social and political pressure on the leaders of Iran so that they have to negotiate about that nuclear program. They have to be willing to say, we'll give up some of that if you'll let up on these sanctions a little bit. So that brings us back to our basic claim here. The danger of all of that is what if they keep saying, we'll negotiate here, but they're secretly building up a weapon over there. Who's being reckless about all of this? The simple truth is we have to give this a rating of incomplete because nobody really knows until this story plays out. Only when Iran either gives up its nuclear program or announces it has a bomb, will we know who was reckless and who was right. Wolf. Tom, thank you. All right, let's find out how the candidates came across to debate watchers. We have more results coming in now from our post-debate poll. We asked, who seemed to be a stronger leader? Look at this. 51% said President Obama, compared to 46% for Governor Romney. We asked, who was more likable? 48% said President Obama, 47% said Governor Romney. We asked, who spent more time attacking his opponent? 68% said President Obama, compared to 21% uh, who said Governor Romney. Very interesting numbers. Let's go back to Candy. Candy? Thanks, Will. Still here with James Carville and Ari Fleischer. So some of these numbers actually are, are good for Governor Romney because <laughs> it isn't just who won the debate, who showed leadership very close. Um, this is what I was trying to explain to James a little while ago. <laughs> explain away. Look, here's how I think you have to look at all three together. I, I think that in the first debate, Mitt Romney scored six runs in the first three innings. In the second debate, President Obama scored a run. Tonight he scored a run. He lost six to two. This is the trajectory of campaigns. And that's why I was saying when the, when the debate ended that maybe Mitt Romney got beat by the president on the president being more feisty. But when it comes to voter behavior, I don't think this debate changed a thing. That trajectory of the race, as your internal CNN polls are now starting to show, is unchanged. Numbers like that don't move a thing. So let me, before you answer, right. because you wanted to also talk to David Gergen. No. Now, it's been so long, no, I forgot what David right. said. I, but. <laughs> I said that I thought that the president was more articulate, was more coherent, and more presidential. I think those things matter. 
I think, and I think that clearly everybody agrees the president run this debate. The CNN poll agrees with that. Traditionally, the CNN poll has been eight points more Republican than the electorate has. I